Ayaw doon mo. Di siya ang kagulit. I just wanted to come in and say, uh, Uncle Greta feeling a little bit better these few days. Uh, I know y'all saw me taking a little whip of my little pill. That is my medicine right there. That's from cannabis. Those of y'all who don't know about that, the cannabis. Rule one when smoking a drink. Don't smoke a ready roll drink. See what's in it. Know what's in it. Many folks done got messed up like that right there. Uncle Greeley one of them. Some folks put some stuff up in there one time. I didn't know if I was going coming or if I had them. God does it. I woke up buck naked in the hospital and didn't know what was going on. I was scrapped down and Uncle Greeley ain't doing I parsed the right since then. Rule number two. Don't worry about how much I smoke unless you put in on it. <laughs> if you ain't put in, then hush up. Let Uncle Billy smoke till they can't smoke now. That's it right there. Oh, okay. Let's see. Back to room number one. Mm -hmm. Just chilling out with some folks at a horse ranch. And I guess they thought it'd be funny if they was to go there and what some folks call that they were geeking up at their joint. They geeked up Uncle Greeley. Uncle Greeley just don't hardly a little bits and pieces and look couple of sketches of that that night. That thing that was big. That thing when I woke up and I thought about it and I didn't know what it all went on and I didn't know, you know, why I had to woke up there in the hospital, that thing was scary. And I, I suffered from flashbacks from that, that thing right there along with some other stuff. And I think about the folks who have been in car accidents and, and, you know, they done woke up there and don't know how they got there and, and then they might be done lost a loved one in the process of that accident and that's hard for them to deal with and you ain't done been down that road then you don't know. And, and, and we quick to pay judgment. We love to pay judgment on other folks and what they should be and shouldn't be doing, and they all the right, they all to the be done got over that, and you got to get over that, and you got to move on, got to move on, got to have that go. I can't stand when I hear folks say stuff like that, they ain't never been through stuff. They ain't done been through that same stuff from them that folks done been through. If you ain't done been through that stuff right there, just hush your mouth up, because you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about right there. You know. A lot of folks is some very children, so I could really them been down that road. That ain't no easy thing. People suffering cause of that. People suffering cause of war and stuff like that right there. We got to get straight some kind of way. The condition of this world is sad. You know, a person can't walk out their door and feel secure. People can't even feel secure up in their own home. You got folks just busting up in your house and robbing you and killing people in their own home. And, and then, what's that lady name up front in that little Miss Catherine? The police bust up in her house and killed her up. Uncle Greta couldn't sleep for a long time after that happened to that poor old woman. We got to make sure stuff like that don't happen. 
We got to learn, y'all, from Christians. We got to learn, y'all, how to love you one another better. Everybody keep on saying it's going to be better by and by. Or Jesus going to make it better and God going to make it better. But what about you? What you going to do to make it better? She ain't waiting on somebody to come back here on a cloud and stardust and all kind of stuff like that. And you ain't doing nothing to help the situation. And we got to learn how to love you one another. That ain't easy to do. When you're mad at somebody, you don't want to help them, you don't want to see nothing good for them, go to hell. They go in the hell. Why would you want to see somebody burning in a lake of fire and don't ever stop burning? That ain't, that ain't right. You didn't think that way. You don't have to like somebody to help them or to want to see something good come of them. I sat down there that I got out that there hawk, they put me in the psychiatric hospital. You know, Uncle Greer needed that there anyway. But it still played with my mind. Because when you induced under them there drugs and things, you don't know if you're going or coming. Your mind working in a mysterious way. Them drugs and pull stuff up out the back of your mind. And plenty of people. Battling that thing. Uncle Gritty was buck naked in a J-boot. Don't remember taking off nothing. Even my shoes was gone. I stripped buck naked. Laying there on that little old tiny table up in that there emergency room with some scraps on my hand. Woke up from there. I said, it's I dead. It's I dead. Cause it was just white all around, ain't no way I was. I said, I'm gonna set my eyes back up here. We open my eyes and see if I wake up here again. So I went on back to sleep now. I woke up a little later, same thing. I said, oh shit, this how it is when you dead. You trapped in your body, can't move can see, but you're dead, you can't do nothing. So I got a little work, then I shut my eyes back, I didn't know I was opening and closing my own eyes and shit, I wasn't thinking about that, I just was thinking on other stuff. And shut my eyes back there and then open them up a little bit later on and I heard a beep, beep. Then I heard somebody next to me talking and I said, I kind of peeled my head around and looked a little bit. Then I saw a cousin, it won't complete the white no more. So then I just started looking around the room. It was then I come to realizing that I was in the hospital. Then a man walked up in the room. He said he's a nurse and I was reaching trying to scratch my nose and that's when I come to realize that my hands were tied up. I said, can you untie my hand? He said, you promise not to fight? I said, huh? He said, you promise not to fight? I said, why, yes, sir. And so he comes to undoing my hands, and old Uncle Gritty felt like a rusty penny with a hole in it, with a head on both sides. I felt worthless. I didn't know what happened to happen. Then I went on back to sleep because of all them medicines they had put in me. I just like to tell y'all folks who think stuff like that funny. It ain't funny to me. It ain't funny to me. It ain't funny to the ones you done done it to. Got no right to mess around with other folks like that then. Now. Uncle Greta got somewhere to go. Uncle Greta been getting out this house more than he used to get got out since he got them children he's seen about. Got some children. Big old children, too. One of them just turned 18, she's the gal. Told Uncle Greta he need a haircut. Uncle Greta have a way down, you know. 
Then I said, I can't grease my hands up there because I got arthritis and, you know, I can't hardly do too much with these old hands. So I said, him, you know, I got that arthritis and so she said, I cut your hair for you. I hope they go ahead over there because she said she could cut some hair. Mm. So I, when she got through cutting my head, I was there. I said, oh, what you done done to me? Because I ain't got none in the back back there. She was styling Uncle Grilla hair like a book. Some girl had a hair. I said, you don't cut Uncle Grilla hair like that. Uncle Grilla is a man. She's a man where they hair like that there too. And it just ain't. Won't even grow back out back there in the back since she took it and whacked it out. Then just that other boy. Just that other boy. That that boy is comes to be fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just turned fifteen. And that's the one that the school be calling me about all the time. They used to, he's the reason Uncle Greeley had to get up and get out of that house. And then there's that other one, that eleven year old one. Now that one that could eat, he could eat more than them other two put together. And Uncle Greeley, and he was eleven. I, I told that boy, I said, listen, you got to find something else to do other than to eat. Because when they first come here, they didn't want to go outside. They didn't want to do no more sat up in the house. And I said, they like, well, you can't send us out here with these people we don't know, and you ain't going to come out here and make sure we all right. So that's how I got to the parts. Because, you know, I wanted them children to be all right. They done been through a lot of stuff, you know, and, and and I signed that paper saying that I was going to see about them children and I'm going to see about them children's right. That's how come I had to get out this here house and I had to go down yonder to that school. I didn't want to. It went against a whole lot of stuff, you know, to get Uncle Greeley out this house because Uncle Greeley been sitting up in this house for a long, long time. Internet came to be my friend. I could click on this here thing and I could go to China. I could look around China, and I ain't even had to leave my house. <laughs> Whoever invented this thing is a genius, and I love them. I love them. I wish that more people in my situations had these here things. They could chit-chat with other folks, because you can chit-chat. You can chat with that person, and you can talk to that person, and you can come to be friends. And I came to be friends with some folks just, just that way. And, and 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 we can talk about some stuff and and then you know you can go up on there and you can read and Uncle Greeley got to reading about some of that, that stuff that was bothering Uncle Greeley and that's how Uncle Greeley got some little knowledge and knowledge is power. You want more power? Read, study. Don't study that fabul stuff. You read that real stuff. What them that scientists them put in a book and. Well, they done studied for years on stuff to make sure so stuff is read. Get you some power. Some power. Read a book. Don't read no fiction. You read a real book. That's what Uncle Greeley suggests for y'all today. Go to the stress, anxiety, and panic page. And you just read what some of your folks is just going through. Who's suffering from that, that stuff and postpartum and <sighs> Uncle Greta suffering. That that gal who 18 years old comes telling me, she said, she said, Uncle Greta, why you always talk about yourself in the third person? I said, what do you mean by that, that child? She said, you always be saying Uncle Greta this and Uncle Greta that. You be talking about yourself like you talking about another person. That's talking about the third person. So I'm just the third person sometimes, the voice, the second and the third, I told her. And she was like, well, you got to stop doing that, Uncle 